Hello everybody, um, welcome or welcome back. My name is Mel and yeah, welcome to the Cozy Cardigans podcast. I'm back. Um, sorry, I'm probably going to say um a lot because I'm very not used to this, but I hope you've all been doing well. Uh... Sorry. Um, yeah, I hope you've all been doing well. I'm back. Thank you all so much if you've reached out to congratulate or send well wishes to me and my family. Um, it's very much appreciated. And if you're new here and you're wondering why I was gone for, I think it's been four months now. Um, yeah, about four months. It's because I just had my, well not just, but I recently had my baby, um, baby boy, his name is Everest, his Japanese name is Arashi, um, I'll talk more about family stuff, life stuff at the end of this probably really long episode, but, um, thank you all so much for the well wishes, uh, if you're new, welcome, yes, so my name is Mel, I recently had my baby boy Everest. I live here in Hyogo, Japan with my husband Tim and now our son Everest. Wow, that was very repetitive. Um, but yes, I live in Hyogo, Japan. I am a indie yarn store owner, so I sell hand dye yarns at Big Little Yarn Co. And you can find me on Instagram. I think I'm only on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram as big at Big Little Yarn Co. Um, I also have website newsletter. If you're interested, um, this episode I'm probably. I mean, it's been four months, so there's a lot of stuff to catch you up on. I'm not going to go through all of the things that I'm currently, I have a ton of whips. I still have a ton of whips. And as you can probably guess, I'm not knitting as much because, you know, newborn baby, well, he's not newborn anymore, but new baby, um, not as much time to knit or read or spin or whatever. So, um, I still have a ton of whips, but I do have three three FOs, three whips that I'm kind of like working on consistently I guess and then I have I mean I've purchased a lot of yarn has come in since I've last spoken to you I'm not going to go through all of them because that would be just way too much so I'm just gonna be checking on my phone every now and then cuz uh, Tim's um, hanging out with Evie while I film so I told him I he could text me if he ever needed me but um anyway so yeah three FOs three whips some of like my yarn acquisitions from the past four months I can't remember everything off the top of my head like what's happened in these past four months because it's kind of been a blur but, um, so yeah, some of my yarn acquisitions, some cast on plans, and also I am going to be having my first shop update. It's going to be a ready to ship shop update on September 4th at 11 a.m. Japan Standard Time, which is September 3rd at... 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you didn't catch any of that, don't worry. Info is down below. Um, I'm going to be showing you what yarns, what yarns, what colorways, what bases I'm going to be uh, having in that shop update. It's going to be my first shop update since I've had my baby. Um, it's going to be ready to ship because 
Um, we are planning on going back to America for about a month or so for to see our family. Um, it's been two years since we've been back in America, so we wanted to have Evie meet our family for the first time. So we're going to be doing that after the shop update, so I can't do pre-orders this time around. So everything's ready to ship. The theme is Spooky Summer. So it's going to be my Halloween colorways. I have four, yeah, four variegated colorways that I've had previously from my Halloween updates, as well as two new variegated colorways and a whole bunch of tonals. So anyways, that'll be at the end of the video. I'm probably going to put little what do you call them? Like bookmark? Bookmark timestamps? Um, so that you could just click through some wherever on the video you'd like to see if you're... Um, I just wanted to put that at the end of the video in case you're not really interested in that. I know some of you just want to see me talk about yarn. So, well anyways, yeah. And then also life update stuff will be at the end too if you're interested in, you know, all the news about the baby and stuff. I know some of you aren't interested in that which is totally not a problem. So first let me talk about FOs. So I don't remember what order I finished any of this. Um, I'm pretty sure I finished some some other thing too but I honestly can't remember. But anyways this is one that I haven't shown you um, as an FO. I think the previous episode, you've probably seen it. Oh, my battery's dying. Okay, sorry. My battery's dying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just change it out really quick. Okay. Sorry if the angle changed a little bit. I wasn't sure where I placed the camera before I changed the battery pack. So anyways, I was talking about what I'm wearing. Um, you've seen me talk about knitting it in my previous episodes, so, um, if you want to hear me talk more about the nitty gritty stuff, um, I'd suggest you check back on those. But this is the Frequency Sweater, Frequ yeah, Frequency Sweater by um, Tina Say. It's a bit wrinkly because it is way too hot to wear sweaters right now. Even a knit shirt top like this, it's, it's so humid in Japan. Um, it's one of the hottest summers on record so it's humid it's hot it's bright it's sunny and yeah so I'm a little sweaty even with the AC on here so I don't really wear this out um, I haven't worn this out at all actually since I finished it so um, this is my first time wearing it actually um, so it's really wrinkly so I apologize but anyways so frequency sweater by Tina Say. Um, the main color, so this pink kind of speckly variegated color is by Itopito Yarns um, and she is also a Japanese yarn dyer and this is her colorway Mocha Chocolate. It's this really pretty kind of like muted blush color with a lot of these, um, I'm not sure if you saw it earlier, but it's got these brown, orange, yellow speckles throughout, which is super pretty. And then the contrast color, so this cream is um, Dendritic Agate by Akara Yarns. She is a Filipino-Canadian dyer. Um, we did a yarn calendar swap last year and that this was from her yarn calendar this was the main 100 gram skein that came with her yarn calendar so it worked out really well i really love the yarn combo um i used or i used i made the size three um which was a size larger than I would have chosen before I got pregnant. So I would have chosen a size two based on my bust 
circumference. Before my pregnancy, I was a 34 size bust, but during pregnancy and post-pregnancy, because I breastfeed, I'm a 37 inch bust. And so I decided to go with the size 3 because I wanted it to be roomier. And also, I like oversized things anyway, so it's not like when my boobs size down <laughs> that um, I'm going to be worried about it being oversized. So yeah, that's so I decided to go for the size 3. Because I think if I chose a size th size two, it would have been, it would have only had like a couple inches of V's, like one or two inches, and I like a lot more positive V's than that. So I decided to go for the size three. I think for the arms though, I went ahead and followed the instructions for this size two. So then, um, what I did was I increased, you know. I, um, this is me going off the top of my head. It's been a while. So I think I talked more about it in my previous episode. So you should go back. But anyways, I kind of followed the top instructions for the size 2. And then I uh, went ahead and did increases for the yoke until I hit size 3. And then I followed the rest of the pattern of the body for the size 3. I'm sorry if you hear my husband singing to our son. <laughs> Evie really likes it when Tim sings to him. So just ignore that if you uh, if you hear that on the background. But anyways, so yeah, size two ish three kind of like modified version. Um, I do like this top. One thing that I don't love about it is all this wrinkliness that comes from it. I'm not sure what exactly causes it. I think so one thing that the pattern does is that it has you split not perfectly half and half from the back and the front. So usually when you split for armholes you kind of the pattern kind of tells you it tells you the certain amount of stitches, but what it ends up being is that half, ex pretty much exactly half of the amount of stitches of the body goes to the back, half goes to the front, and then um, minus the part that goes for the underarms, so if that makes sense. So it's even in the front and the back, essentially. The thing about this one that the designer, Tina, um, has you do is she has you put more uh, stitches on the front than on the back, I think, to make up. Sorry, I'm a mess. My memory card was full, so I had to delete some stuff. So anyways, I was talking about the fact that Tina has you put more stitches in the front than in the back, and I think that kind of causes a bit of bunching if you don't have the bust to kind of fill it with maybe like if my bust was bigger maybe it will it would have kind of opened it up more and have eased the wrinkles a little bit because if I open it up like this the wrinkles kind of go away if that makes sense but also it might also be the fact that you kind of have to increase pretty rapidly along this kind of segment here before you start the color work over here and then also this one by one color work kind of causes it it's like an accordion like it kind of causes a bit of bunching but I kind of wish that I kind of did the usual equal front and back thing because I don't think I need this extra fabric in the front then in the back, I don't know, it kind of causes like this bit of extra fabric here that I don't necessarily need. I wish that it was offset evenly in the front and back, if that makes sense. So anyways, not, not a huge deal, but now I know that for yoked sweaters, I like it equal front and back. 
Um, she also has options for a long sleeve. I decided on a short sleeve because I only used uh, two skeins of the main color. I didn't have enough of the main color yarn for long sleeves. But I think that this looks really cute in short sleeves because it's like a nice springtime color. I think that next spring it would be pretty nice when it's still chilly from the winter but it's warming up and I can wear t-shirts or something. Um, but yeah, I finished it too late this past spring so I couldn't wear it at all. But yeah, so this is the frequency sweater. Um, another uh, finished object is the Ornata blouse. So I posted this on Instagram so maybe I'll post pictures here. Um, but this was a test knit for Teti of Teti's Knit Garden. Um, so yeah, or not a blouse. This was super fun to knit. Um, the main color here is the is uh, by Positive Ease, and it is their colorway spicy mix. This is the fingering weight base. It's got this really pretty. It's like a dark beige base and it's got bits of blues and oranges and some some bits of red and then um hold on just a sec sorry baby needed me so anyways we're not a blouse um yes main color positive e spicy mix uh, and then the contrast color for the colorwork sleeves is my own Big Little Yarn Co. My trusty sock base in the Kabocha colorway. Here's a little close up of the sleeves. I love the colorwork design on this. So you start off, it's a top down sweater. You start off from the top, it's got a pico edge. I don't know if you could see that. And then it's got a gather. So it's super pretty. It's kind of like a peasant top almost. And then you work your way down and then the sleeves is kind of like a balloon sleeve I guess. Yeah balloon sleeve because it's got pretty much yeah, no decreases in the color section. And then a rapid decrease here. And then the hem. Teti also has options for the bottom. So I did the gathered ribbed bottom. And she also has a pico edged bottom that's not gathered. Which is also equally cute. But I kind of wanted it to go with like my high waisted pants. So it hits right where my pants start. Um, so I really love this. This is the size three as well. Um, and it's got a good amount of ease. Not too much, not too little. It fits really well. Um, yeah, hopefully you could, I mean, you can't really see <laughs> me very well. Oh baby's crying. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, sorry. Had to feed the baby. What was I talking about? I hope you don't mind this like very discontinuous form of podcasting, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, I was talking about the Ornata blouse. What else did I say? Knit the size 3, good amount of ease, talked about the hem and the sleeves. The sleeves I had a little bit of trouble with because I finished one sleeve before I gave birth and then the other sleeve after I gave birth, gave birth and I kind of forgot like how many repeats I did and so I had to knit the end kind of twice because I bound off and then I realized one sleeve was shorter than the other. So there's that. But otherwise it ended up really nice. I love, oh it's going to be so nice for fall. 
like I love the color work I love how it turned out um yeah one thing I did was for the neck so it's very uh it has a wide so you can kind of see it has a wide boat neck shape to it so I feel like because the sleeves are so much heavier because they're quite large and also has color work um, incorporated into it so it's a bit heavy it kind of drags the neckline down a bit so when I first tried it on the neck kind of went over my shoulders a bit and so that was not quite the look I was going for I think this is the front actually so what I did was I did a I'm not sure if you could see but I did a crochet reinforcement all along I'm trying to, I'm trying to show it to you uh, it's a little hard to see there's this line here and that's the crochet reinforcement I put on so there's no give to this so um, I just found a random crochet hook I had and just uh, stitched crocheted the along the edge right below these pico bumps so that way there's no give and so when I put it on it doesn't drag down over my shoulders and I'm really happy I did that because otherwise I think mean, even over time even like necklines like these they kind of open up just due to wear and just how it hangs off your body so putting in a crochet reinforcement should help quite a bit um, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube if you're wondering how I did it I just found one and did it but I do re recommend that if you do have kind of like a boat neck style sweater and it's been kind of popping over your shoulder um, it's a good fix to do so yeah that's another fo and then i have one more fo that i have not blocked yet but i finished quite a while back and it is the let me see which way is the front this is the Untuva sweater. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's the Untuva sweater by Ron Ronya Hakatello. That's her last name. Anyways, info. Oh, by the way, all the info is going to be in the description box, and I also I'm going to put the names and stuff on the screen as well, in case you haven't noticed. But um, so this is the Untuva sweater. This was another test knit that I did. Um. Yeah, I love it. So let's see. First, the yarn. The yarn is by. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. I have it right here. Hey, Mama Wolf yarns. This is another. This is the same base, just a different colorway. It's by Hey Mama Wolf yarns. It's their Shaw Wolf number no. three base which is 100% organic wool, merino, land race, and black face sheep. So this is their dark brown colorway. This is just another skein that I had. But um, So this gray and the cream are both a natural color, so undyed colors. And then Hey Mama Wolf works with natural dyes. And so the yellow, I forget what they used in particular but it's a naturally dyed yellow and here's a little bit of a close-up so it's not blocked so it's pretty wrinkly sorry <laughs> I just I don't have time to block nowadays but I'll try to stretch it out for you a little bit so here's the color work yoke and then it's um has a double folded brim and it has just like a regular hem but I wanted to use as much of the gray yarn as possible 
and so I ended up doing like a high low split hem it's kind of rolling in because I haven't blocked it yet but once I block it it should stretch out nicely and then I also another mod is I don't like um, very tight upper arm sleeves and so I didn't do any decreases until my I pretty much knit straight until my elbow and then I did decreases from there and then also for the hem I made it a little longer than called for I think it called for only about two inches in the pattern or maybe one and a half inches and I also went up a, a needle size so that um, it kind of made this straight like it doesn't cinch in like a regular do I have a um, maybe I could show you on here so usually a hem would kind of cinch in like this because you'd go down a needle size and do ribbing but this one I kind of wanted it to just hang and not go on my wrist too tightly and so once I block it I believe it should kind of open up a bit more like this so it's a bit more of like a straight sleeve and I did the same for the bottom so I went up a needle size for the hem here so that it doesn't cinch in it kind of just will hang straight once I block it properly and for the split hem so I pretty much just went until my usual length so right where I like to or not where I like to but where I start my uh, where my high-waisted pants start and then when I got there I sp split the front and back evenly and then there is a little garter edge so it doesn't like roll up too much and then I pretty much just followed that all the way down and then I knit the back um, pretty much until I knit in stock in it until it hit the same length as the front and then I did the ribbing so if that makes sense so it should have a high low split hem so that kind of used up a lot of the pretty much almost all the yarn so I'm pretty happy with that um, I like doing that because then I don't have to guesstimate when I go in the round. I could just make the back a little longer or a little shorter depending on how much yarn I have after I finish the front. So might be something you like to do. But yeah, I finished this a while back. I haven't blocked it because I'm not in a rush to wear it yet. It's very wooly since it's organic wool. Um, it's a little toothier than say merino obviously um, but it's gonna be super warm for the winter I tried it on and I immediately sweated my butt off so it'll be super warm super excited to wear it I love the neutral but bright color combo and I love the color work design I love how it starts off in the white and then just kind of like not fades but it works in itself into the gray I knit the size 3 yeah I knit the size 3 pretty much exactly to pattern except for the modifications I talked about earlier but yeah this is my third FO and it has yet to be blocked and I still have to weave in the ends too just, I still have time and since I'm not gonna wear it anytime soon I'm just like procrastinating at this point but yeah that is all my FOs so now on to my whips so for my whips again I have like a ton of other whips that I kind of have knitted on but I'm not really like putting all my time into like I am for these so first whip let's see here. Ok, 
Okay, first whip is this little sweater. So this is the in Ingrid Sweater Baby by Petite Knit. Um, I believe there's a women's size as well, women's adult size. But this is for a baby. I'm knitting the 6 to 9 months size because that's how old Evie will be when winter comes. And it is so cute. So I finished the body. And the I like to work the collar as soon as I finish the body because I hate doing the collar last. So it has a double fold collar and it's got a bunch of these fun textures, mock cables, ribbing, double seed stitch. Yeah, it's a really fun pattern to make. I'm currently knitting the sleeve. I am using Knitting for Olive. Let's see if I could find a skein or a ball here. So I'm using this Knitting for Olive um, Heavy Merino. Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colorway Fennel Seed, which is this really nice, like, muted green color. And, uh, yeah, I'm it's just a fun knit to make so far. I haven't made a petite knit pattern in a really long time. Um, maybe in like, I don't know, maybe since 2017-ish, so maybe like five years ago. So anyways, it's a really fun pattern to make. Uh, the stitches make it really fun. I really want to make it the women's size after I make this so that we can match. Um, I think that'd be really cute. But yeah, this is for Evie. Yeah, not much to say about it. I'm pretty much knitting it according to pattern. I'm not modifying anything because it's just for a baby. Not that he'll complain about it. So, so yeah, it looks a bit cinched in right now because of all the ribbing. But once I finish and I block it, it should. Um strain now quite a bit but yeah this is one thing I've been working on pretty consistently so there's that another whip I'm working on is this this is the Felix cardigan it's a bit of a mess, so I apologize. This is the Felix Cardigan oops, by Savory Knitting, I believe. Um, I forget her real name. I'll put the info on the screen. Um, Felix Cardigan It's coming along. I'm currently doing the other sleeve. I still haven't finished the body. I put it on some spare needles because I only have I'm currently using it currently using it I'm currently using Nuded In by Oner Oak Air in the tall bark colorway I believe holding it double it's this really pretty brown it has like bits of maroon I want to say within it it's kind of like very multi-dimensional and it's a lot softer than I thought it would be so anyways I only have one more plate of this so I'm kind of worried about how much yarn I, how much um of the length I should do it calls for 10 inches right now I think it's about eight inches um so I don't know if I should go more so I'm, I decided to just knit up the sleeves first so I could so I know that that can so I don't have to worry about running out of yarn for sleeves at least oops sorry I shook you so I finished one sleeve currently doing the other one I'm not doing any modifications on this either and it's got this really cute yoke this little eyelet motif and so once I finish this other sleeve I'm going to see how much yarn I have left over and then just kind of guesstimate from there because then I just need to do the body and then the um, 
button band and collar and it should be good it's a it's like a nice chunky oversized autumn cardigan and I'm really excited for it I really love the fabric that's created by the Newtonden so it's got like some red specks in there yeah super pretty I'm really excited for that um yeah not much to say because I don't really didn't really modify anything um it's my first time working with Newton I've worked with unspun wool before so it's not not really anything new it's my first time holding it double though and it's definitely a lot easier than holding it single which is what I did when I first knit with it but yeah um, it's a nice quick knit because it, since I'm holding it double it's like a worsted weight um, but yeah other than that yeah I'm excited to wear this during the autumn so that's that and then my last whip that I've been really concentrating on is this what the fade shawl so a while back I posted on my stories that because I was kind of reorganizing my yarn over here and I realized that there was this really nice fade that I created um, so I looked on my Ravelry favorites to see what kind of fade pattern that I could use it on because I know finding your fade I've made that before but that uses seven colorways and also I've made it before but I frogged it actually after I finished it because I just didn't wear it that much it's just like um just really wasn't my style but also I think it might have been like the colorways I chose so I do want to knit another one again some other time but um yeah well anyways I didn't really want to make a find your fade so I found not that I found but I saw that the what your fade shawl by Drea Drea Rune Knits, Andrea Maori uses a five color fade and used brioche, which was perfect because I really wanted a brioche project for some reason. I just really wanted a repetitive brioche stitching experience. So here it is so far. So you start off in the middle here and then you slowly start to make increases. Let's see if I could show it to you. So, this is the right side, this is the wrong side, either side looks super fun. So, let me, let me tell you about the yarn, I guess. Um, right now there's four, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a fade segment right now, it's kind of hard to tell. But because of that, I have four balls attached to this thing. So hold on, let me situate myself. So let me see here. Um, okay. So color A. So the yarn. So the two colors that I started with here. Let me see if I could... If you could kind of see it up more up close it's a bit hard to tell because my fade is a bit subtle which I really like I really like how the fades coming along but the part here has my this is just like a one-of-a-kind um, random tonal that I made while I was dyeing yarn and then also in the back I used this lovely purple it's from a Japanese indie yarn dyer and their shop name is Peroque Parlay and it's another one of a kind of theirs purple colorway um, so it has these two together so this fades into so this fades into this which is Graphic Dye Works. Um, I don't remember the colorway name, so I'll put it on the screen. But it has this really nice subtle fade. 
So this is color B, A, B. And this is D, and this fades into this. So this one is a old colorway that I dyed for Wool and Honey. It's one of their specialty colorways, this sample I dyed for them. It is Sunset at Lake Leonau, I believe that's the lake's name. Um, but it's a very old colorway. So this is fading into this on the wrong side. And then, so right now we got A, B, and then C. So right now, this is what I'm fading into currently. This is my colorway Wisteria. This is so hard to show, but this is A, B, and C. So this is on the right side. And then, so D, E, and then I am fading into F, which is another one of my one-of-a-kind colorways that I just randomly dyed. And it's looking a bit pink right now, but it's a bit more muted. I feel like this is a little more color correct. Um, so it's fading into this like dark pink color, which I really love. So it's kind of hard to, I'm not going to hold all Oh, sorry, not five colorways, six colorways. I'm not going to hold all six colorways up to you because that would be a mess. But yeah, so that's what's happening. So this is the back. And this is the front. So it's really subtle, which I love. And then um, once I'm done with the brioche sections on here. So let me. Let me try to put these back in this bag. I'm holding it currently in my project bag by The Love Stitch by Tierra. It's got this cute little like garden gnome, garden fairy pattern. Um, but anyway, so once I'm done with that brioche segment, uh, the next bit would be the, uh, garter stitch segment. So, hopefully it would be this really nice, big, schlanket situation. And I'm really excited to get to it. This is my spacing out, super tired, end of the day kind of knit. So I'm just taking this really slow. I'm not rushing it or anything. It's just been really nice to stitch on. Um, I realized that I really like to have like one sweater pattern or one sweater project, one cardigan project, and one shawl project to concentrate on. I just kind of have it at my desk and just grab whatever I liked. I would like to knit on. Um, so that's been working really well for me. I do have other projects that. I have set aside for now but once I finish for example like my shawl I'll pull out an old shawl whip to work on next is my plan unless I find something else to cast on but anyways I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend that there are that I have self-control so I mean I've been pretty good I've been pretty good I've only I haven't cast it on like a ton of stuff and so I've been pretty good I've been finishing stuff so anyways th those are my whips okay those are my whips and now I have like a little bit of a not whip but a project update so some of you have seen my stripey cardigan this is my DAA Cardigan, Don't Ask Again Cardigan by Isabel Kramer. It's this really stripy number. And I've been working on it since January, but I haven't touched it since I've had a V. And you know, I was just thinking about it. I think I'm going to frog it. It's just... I love it. I love the idea. But I was just thinking about it and thinking about it. 
I don't know if I'm gonna wear it. Honestly, I'm still, it's still like here. I still haven't frogged it because I'm just, I just don't know if I'm just having like a crisis or something. But I just don't know if I'm going to wear it. And I feel like it would be really fun to make something like the Rainbow Road Shawl by West Knits. Just marling these colors together sounds really fun to me. I'll put an image here to show what I'm talking about. But like a scrappy version of the Rainbow Road Shawl. I do have the 52 Weeks of Shawls book from Lawn. Um, so, just a little. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm not sure if I should. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm just having like this weird crisis moment where... Yeah, I just don't think I'm going to wear it. But I feel bad frogging it because it's just such a fun idea. But I think I kind of have to let that go and just make something that I'll wear. If that makes sense. So anyways, just a little. That's like something that has been on my mind. So let me talk about some acquisitions I've had. Um, I'm just going to grab them here. So, let me see. Okay, some acquisitions. So I just had, I just brought like single, single skeins. I have sweater quantities of these. Uh, sweater quantity, quantity for me personally is three skeins for fingering weight. That probably won't help you unless you're literally exactly the same size as me. But a lot of people ask, so there that is. Um, three skeins might not be enough for you. It might be too much for you for fingering weight. So just letting you know. But anyways, I have, so first things first, I got in my yarn from Erin Coast to Coast Mush Club Collection. Um, I got the Polypore colorway on her BFL sock base. Let me see if I could kind of close this window a little bit so you could, I don't know, it's a little dark. Kind of see it, there it goes, it's a little better. So this is her polypore colorway on her BFL tweed sock base and it's so good on tweed. I'm so excited to knit with it. It's got the tweediness really kind of brings out that like earthy kind of quality to it. Sorry, let me see if it'll focus. Mm. There it goes. So yeah, super pretty. Nice and neutral. Um, so there's that. And then I also got her Folios colorway. It's the super pretty teal blue green colorway and it's also got bits of orange speckles which I love. I love those like that contrast. It is so good. Some more speckles for you. Super pretty. This is just on her signature sock base, which is 100% superwash merino. So pretty. I love anything that Erin does. And another stash acquisition is um, Shop La Mercery. Jess had uh, Explorer Knits shop update a while back for full skein versions of her advent or her winter solstice box colorways so uh, it sold out so fast i had like two or three different colorways in my cart and they sold out so quickly so i ended up just getting one colorway but anyways it's still really good this is woodland on um denali sock ali's denali sock base which is 80 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon and it is this beautiful 
dark mood not super dark but like mid-toned purple colorway oh it's so pretty so pretty um it's not it doesn't have speckles in it but just look at that get those like the different tones of purple in it it's so nice so i got a sweater quantity of this so good and then last yeah last kind of acquisition no just kidding i have another acquisition after these but um there is a online yarn shop here in japan called yarnaholic who sells hand-dyed yarns from around the world and naughty pine fiber co uh i've been a big fan of her stuff for a while and um I missed her last year's advent calendar and it was so good but um I saw that she shipped out some yarn to Yarnaholic and so when the yarn dropped I pounced on it so fast so this is one of the colorways I got this is vanilla pines on her big horn soft face um 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and it's this beautiful green color and you know you guys know I love my greens I love a good green it's got these burnt umber speckles in it so good so good and it's kind of like a yellow toned like mustardy green color but ooh, look at these speckles so I got a sweater quantity of this so pretty and I also got a sweater quantity of this this is tumbleweed heart which is oh it looks so good on camera <laughs> but it's just this like burnt pink burnt burnt grapefruit color waves burnt dark grapefruit is what I want to call it but again big horn sock it looks a bit more orange on camera it's a little less orange a little more pink it's a little hard to tell maybe but it is so pretty. Again, it's got some good old speckles. This time I think it's like a dark brown, blackish speckles. And let me see if I could... Oh, here's some, some speckle action for you. Super pretty. Yeah, I got a sweater quantity of this as well. Anyways, big fan of Naughty Pine Fiber Co. So I got a sweater quantity of that as well. Well, and last acquisition, I saw on Ravelry, just randomly, let me find, I totally forgot the name, obviously. Let me see, let me see. I saw this, not cardigan, shawl pattern, Slice of Light by Suzanne Sommer, just randomly. And I immediately put it on my queue because it's got brioche, it's got um, some, they, she used, uh, it's a, uh, you use fingering weight yarn, but also you hold part, in parts of it I believe you hold mohair together. I'm going to use Suri, which I'll show you in a sec, but um, yeah, I saw it and I love I just love the design for so much. So I went ahead and from my local yarn shop, which is A A Lol, A A Lol. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. A Lol Yarns. Um, it's in Osaka. I went ahead and bought some yarns that would go really well together for it. So it calls for two colorways in. Uh, 100 grams each fingering weight and then also 150 grams gain of a kid silk mohair lace base but I'm using Surrey alpaca so I went ahead and got this this is lavendol lavendol I'm not sure how to pronounce it lavendol yarns um it's an Italian maybe it's lavendole yarns but it's a Italian yarn brand and these are 50 grand schemes, so I got two to make one 100 grams total. But this is their, 
the base is called a chic blend. It's 60% abruzzese wool, 20% alpaca, 20% mohair. This is the Koei Barbera, and it's coming up really red, but it's more so like a maroon colorway. Not sure, maybe if I hold it back a little bit. This is a little more correct. It's not as red as it looks on camera. So I got this, and then I also got this. So this is looking really bright right now. So you can kind of see that it's a bit more, this one's a bit more maroon than this. This is a bit more, red, definitely more red. So this is, again, Lavendole Chic Blend. This is their colorway Crue Croza. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. So these are the two colors that I decided on. Maybe this, you can kind of see the colors a little bit better if I hold it back a little bit. And then to hold with it together, this is from my new shop update. <laughs> I took it from, I shopped my own shop update before it opened. But this is a new colorway that I will show you in a little bit. But um, this is a new tonal called Urami. Again, I'll show you in a bit. But I think it would go really well together with these. They were meant to be. They were meant to be. So this is going to be my next shawl cast on If I, when, once I finish. I promise I'll try to finish this first. I'll try my best to hold off, but anyways, I'm really excited for this combo. Um, the yarn I'm super excited to work with. It's a non-super wash. It's very squishy. It's got... Um, a bit of a halo. I'm not sure if you could see it. It's got a bit of a halo from the mohair, I believe. But it's soft from the alpaca. I've never knit with a bruise SC wool. I'm, I'm guessing that's an Italian sheep wool. But yeah, super excited about that. So that is all my acquisitions. Um, I... I'm still waiting on a couple of things, but I have not bought anything lately, so that's good. Um, and I also wanted to talk about like another yarn plan. I currently have... Sorry, my battery's died again. So, future knitting plans. I currently have this beautiful, beautiful French, uh, French wool, Pyrenees fingering, so French, natural French wool, yeah, um, from, I think she closed up shop, but it's by, what's it, how do you say it, Les Moutons Breton, I guess is how you would pronounce it, there you go, so it's this beautiful natural like brown gray wool and I've just been I've had this in my stash for a little bit just wondering what I should do with it and I decided I want to make the Nichi Nichi cardigan by uh, Yamagara she's Yamagara on Instagram I think this would be so perfect for it I'm pretty sure I put the picture up here so yeah, this is what I want to cast on once I finish the Felix cardigan that I'm gonna hopefully finish soonish because it's worsted. But yes, just a little, just a little, little daydreaming for you there. Um, but anyways, that is on my whips, fo's, acquisitions. I'm gonna talk about my shop update now. So if you're not interested in that totally fine but if you still want to look at pretty yarn you're welcome to stay so let me gather them real quick we let me move these out of the way this so i have six variegated colors and six tonals um, so, a 
Okay. First off, this is Hereditary. So these are all in my trusty sock, but I'm going to have, um, if you want to go on my Instagram, I do have all this info up there as well. And also, all this info will be in my shop newsletter, so I'm going to put the link to sign up for the newsletter below. I'm going to be sending that out, I think, about five days-ish before the shop update, which is on September 4th, so end of August. I'll be sending that out. Um, so if you want to have all this information on hand, have all the links on hand, so I put all the links in that newsletter so that you could just click and check out because I do sell out really quickly for ready to ship updates unfortunately so just putting that out there but anyway so these are all in my trusty sock base but I do also have two new bases coming into the shop so let me also grab those so that you could see a comparison sorry you're gonna see me going up and down and up and down because I just don't have space here but the first colorway that I'm bringing into the spooky summer collections these are all colorways based off of spooky shows or movies that I really love um, so again four of the variegated colorways I've had before um, and then two of the tonals I've had before everything else is new excuse me so First off, Hereditary is a colorway I've had on the very for my very first Halloween collection back in 2020. So, 2 years ago, and a lot of people loved it. I still have a skein of it. Um, I think I'm going to use it for socks. But it's this kind of like moody rainbow of sorts. So, it's got blues, greens, hints of red, yellows and oranges it's got speckles Let me see if it'll it's got speckles here let's go orange red yeah super nice so hereditary has been really good it's just such a fun colorway and then i also have so my one of my new bases is an organic wool linen fingering weight base and it has this, um, the base has a dark gray undertone to it already. So it makes, so if you could kind of see, it makes, it kind of mutes the colors. It makes it a little more moody. And then also since it's non-superwash, it makes it a bit more water, watercolory, if that makes sense. So the speckles are muted, but I love how it looks. So again, organic wool fingering. So I think it's 70% organic wool and 20% fingering. So this is how it looks in that base. Keeps. And then I'm also bringing it in Surrey Alpaca Silk Lace Base. And I love how it looks on this base. So fuzzy so variegated I love it um, so this is hereditary and I will also have it in the usual my usual basis so like superwash merino fingering DK worsted I'm also gonna have it on cashmere sock and I'm gonna have sock sets so the sock set for the sock set, the tonal companion for this is going to be Tsuki, which I've had before, and it means moon. Um, and I'm not going to show you it in the other bases because the tonals are pretty much very similar, just a little more muted in tone. If you want to see um, the kind of like the different comparisons, you could go on my Instagram and check that out. But I'm going to have sock set, so this is going to be the main skein. And this will all have mini skeins of ski so that you can have a sock set version of this. But this is the pairing. And ski means moon in Japanese. So it's this kind of very light, cool gray tonal, which literally goes with anything. I'm currently knitting. I guess I'll just pull it out. 
that's another whip. I haven't worked on this in a while, but I'm using Ski Form my uh, Stitch by Number Shawl by Stephen West. So you can kind of see that. It's the main color. It's this very cool gray. So that's the first two colors. Second color is from last year's spooky Halloween collection. This is Over the Garden Wall, based off of the show, particularly the episode with the pumpkin people. If you know, you know. Um, that's my favorite episode. So it's the super autumnal orange fall Halloween colorway. It's got these speckles. Let's see if it'll. There it goes. It's got oranges and yellows and dark brown speckles. It's got speckles here. And I'm not sure if you could see there's some red in there. It's just this fun autumnal colorway. And it was super popular last year. A lot of people were bummed that they couldn't get it, so I made sure to bring it back this year. And this is how it looks in the linen. So, oh yeah, I also made new yarn tags. Special little yarn tags for this collection. I think it's super cute. Let me see if it'll... There it goes. Spooky summer collection. So this is it on the linen base. And then this is it on the Surrey Alpaca Silk Base. Oh, it's got some dust bunny on it. There it goes. Super autumnal. Um, love that. And then for the contrasting tonal for the sock set. So this will be available in sock set form as well. But it's this fun green color. It's called Kaeru. So kairu means frog and kairu, which might sound the same to some people, but it has a different emphasis on a different syllable in Japanese. So kairu means frog, kairu means to return home. So if you have watched the show, the two boys are trying to return home and also they have a frog friend in the show as well. So it works out really well as a name for the contrasting tonal. So it's this fun green contrast and even though it's green with orange, it just works so well together for some reason. I don't know, it's just such a fun contrast color and I really want to knit myself some socks out of this. It would be so cute, so autumnal. And I hear my baby crying, so I'll be right back. Be right back. Okay, sorry. I had to uh, put the baby down for a nap, so I've been gone for like 30, 40 minutes. So let me continue on with what I was talking about. So I just did over the garden wall. So next one is... Coraline. So Coraline I've been bringing back every year since my first Halloween update two years ago and it is always the top seller. You guys love it a ton and I totally get that. So for those of you who don't know Coraline is mostly blue but very purple as well. Variegated. It's like very uh, soft variegation but it also has speckles, bits of greens, dark purples, light blues, teals. So it's this very, I don't know, it just like can work up into anything you want very easily. And the accompanying tonal for this is also a returning colorway. It is Ame. So it's just this, not super bright, but it's not like a navy blue, but it's just like a true blue, like denim blue maybe colorway. So it's just like a not super high contrast sock set. 
Um, so ame means rain. Ame means candy as well in Japanese. It's like a blue candy rain color. And Coraline. And let me show you Coraline in the other bases. So here's Coraline in the trusty sock. And then here's Coraline in the Surrey Alpaca Silk Lace, which is beautiful. I think I'm going to take a couple skeins of these to make a Cumulus Boss. Um, I think that would be so pretty. So there's that. And then this is Coraline on the Organic Wool Linen. It's super moody and dark. So here's Coraline, super pretty, classic, classic big little yarn co colorway. Uh, fourth one is The Witch, one of my favorite horror movies. Um, this was a colorway from last year and it's this light gray, I mean yeah, light gray base with parts of dark browns and greens, bits of blue, black speckles, it's just a really nice neutral variegated colorway. Now let me show you the wool linen and the Suryapalka silk. So this is the wool linen. So as you can see, it's very kind of like a muted watercolory version. And this is super nice fuzzy version. I love how it, the Surrey Alpaca kind of makes the blue pop a, a bit more. So this is the witch. Ugh. I love this one. I really want a cardigan in this colorway. I feel like these two held together would make a really cozy cardigan. Cozy cardigan. Um, the, let me see, the accompanying tonal for the sock set is a new tonal. It is called Deep Woods and it is this dark brown, kind of like a yellow toned brown if that makes sense. Um, it's just this perfect neutral that goes amazingly with the witch. But here is the accompanying tonal, so deep woods. And again, this is going to be in all the bases. And this will be the sock set, um, but in the mini skiing form. So there is that pair. So two more pairs left. So two more pairs, two new colorways. So this first one is called Ring, which is the ring. And uh, I'm sure you've heard of the movie, very famous Japanese horror movie that's also been remade into the American version. But this colorway, I took inspiration from the haunted VHS tape. So like very fuzzy, very like all that noise from old VHS tapes, if for those of you who remember VHS. Um, so lots of speckles in this one, which is so fun. Very moody. And like I took, um, also took inspiration from the well that Sadako comes from, if you know what I mean. Love this. Um, so the linen and Surrey. So this is the linen version. So yeah, very watercolory and more muted. This is the Surrey alpaca. So it's like a fuzzier version. And here are the... There's three of them. Just trying to like, just trying to focus on my face, but there's the three. They 
looks so good. So Bingu. And the accompanying tonal is Kage. And Kage means shadow in Japanese. So these will make really cool socks. Um, Kage is just this neutral, perfect mid-tone gray. So not black, not light gray, but it would make an amazing contrast color for a lot of things like um, this with Tsuki. Would make an amazing color work sweater. Um, this would also go really well with Deep Woods too. Like this as a trio. Well anyways, let me show you the combinations later, but first. So this is the pairing, so Ringu and Kage. So this will be a sock set as well. Last but not least is Juon. Juon is the Japanese name for the movie The Grudge, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So the grudge, and it's got black for, you know, the hair, red because, you know, I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but <laughs> there are some scenes that involve red fluids. That doesn't sound nice, but anyways, this, I love how this colorway turned out, and it doesn't even, it looks, it's based off of a horror movie, but it's gonna be it would be so much fun to knit with this so it's got fun dark red speckles in it so you can see it's got yellows reds obviously it's also got black speckles and yeah it would be super fun to make socks with this but also um it would be really fun to make like um what do you call it those um purposeful pulling is that what it's called intentional pulling projects that would be really fun too because the black is on one end and the red is on the other end the accompanying tonal for this oh actually let me show you the wool organic wool linen looks like this i love this on the wool linen base here it is, if it will focus, so it's like a softer, grayer version, and this is the Surrey Alpaca, super fun, so here's the, here are the three together, very nice. And the accompanying tonal is Urami. So um, if you remember when I showed you the shawl that I wanted to cast on, this is Urami on the Surrey Alpaca. So this is the Urami on the trusty sock base. And it's just this dark, not burgundy red, but more like a more like a jewel toned ruby red and it would make an amazing contrast color contrast heel toes cuffs for socks but yeah so this is the company tonal udami means um grudge in japanese so yeah so those are all the colors and i wanted to show you some some fun combos if you're interested so here are the warmer toned colorways so far let me sorry it's like a mess here but i really love these four together kind of hard to show these four or even like if you're looking for three color combos this is really good with this in the middle maybe 
So Juon, Urami, and over the garden wall. That looks really nice. Um, another three colored combo is Kaeru with the witch and deep woods. Love that. And then another three color combo gotta say is Ringu, Ame, and Coraline. Those blues. So good. And even adding in If you didn't want all blues, you could do kage. Or if you didn't want kage, let's get these. These are great. And if you wanted like a fade, let me see if I could hold everything together. But I gotta say this five piece combo. Let me see if I can hold it like this. Five piece combo is good. So good. I was looking at this the other day. So Kage, Ringu, Ame, Coraline, Tsuki. Oh my gosh. It's so hard to hold. Sorry. These five would be amazing. These five. So, so good. Another five color set. Did I show you this already? This was just on the floor. But, and I just saw this, but look at this. How autumnal is this? Love that. Um, let me see if I can make like a warm colored warm toned fade so there's these three me four i feel like honestly okay i'd have to use the green maybe the green would be more of a contrast so it'd be less uh fadey but ooh, look at this okay i'm holding it so weird because it's so hard to hold five skeins at once let me see. Okay. Here. How's that? So, Deep Woods, Over the Garden Wall, Urami, Juong, Tsuki. Ooh. Ugh. <laughs> this combo is also amazing. So there's so many combos you can make. And I'll be putting up stories about, sorry, it's something in my eye, stories for combo requests and stuff like that, um, you know. And just because things are paired, like, you know, how I said that, for example, Witch and Deep Woods are a pair, so for the sock set, they're a pair, but that does not mean that it only goes with Deep Woods, for example, like this with Kaeru. Is so pretty. This with Tsuki, again, so pretty. Like, okay, let me grab this with, hold on. So this is the Surrey Alpaca version of Tsuki. But look at this. The Witch plus Surrey pocket key. How pretty would this be in a sweater? So if you haven't held a solid tonal with a more variegated base together for a sweater or a cardigan or whatever, this makes the variegation a lot more subtle and less, I don't know, what do you call it? Less eye-catching, more subtle um, than it would 
than what it would look like if you just had a variegated yarn, like a variegated DK yarn held single. So this would be such a pretty subtle cool gray like I'm thinking like uh what's that like a clove sweater I've made a clove sweater before but oh this would be so pretty and if you wanted to say like marl I think if you on the other hand, have a variegated Surrey, for example, Juong, with a solid tonal fingering held together. That would also be so pretty as a sweater because the variegation, again, would be a lot, le um, lot more subtle. Um, and the marling that it creates really just kind of if you're not really into like a bright, loud, variegated sweater, this would be so pretty. So this is Juong on the Surrey. Held together with the Kage would be so nice. So nice. And um, even this with this. So since that this is so much more red compared to this, there's only little bits of red. The gray and the red would marl together super nicely and it would tone down this red. The gray would tone down this red um, at the gray bits and then the white and red parts would kind of brighten up and lighten the red in those bits. So it would make a really, really beautiful sweater. So you kind of have to think about that if you are new to um, holding Surrey Alpaca with fingering weight stuff. Um, there's so much you can do and another example, let me see, another fun example would be like, I'm going to held together with Dingu on the Surrey. Since there's so much variegation here, if you held these two together, so both Dingu on the Surrey and on the fingering weight. So I'm gonna have 100% superwash fingering as well as trusty sock. And trusty sock, for those of you who don't know, is my 75-25 superwash merino fingering weight base. Superwash merino nylon fingering weight base, sorry. If you held these together, the contrast between the variegations just kind of muddle it sounds bad if I say muddle, but it really blends the variegation together. So you don't see like the, for example, these speckles and like bits of jet black that you see here. It won't be as prominent if you use both Dingu um, versus if you just held this single. Like for example, I'm going to have Superwash Merino DK. Um, available as well. So um, if you use just that DK base, you'll be able to see all the speckling, which is beautiful. Like if you love the speckles, I highly recommend just holding the yarn by itself. Um, that way you can see all the speckles as you knit. So satisfying. If you, on the other hand, really love the fuzziness, like that fuzzy, marled, I don't know what you call that, like subdued variegated look. It would be really fun to hold both of the same colorway together in different bases. Likewise, Dingu on the Surrey with Ame um, as the fingering weight base. The Highly, since it's so highly variegated, it would be so much fun to knit together. Um, yeah. And you don't have to just use, you know, superwash merino base. You can also definitely hold the Surrey Alpaca with wool linen. These wool, organic wool linen is definitely toothier than, you know, 
what a superwash merino would be because it's minimally processed it's organic wool which means that you know they don't use pesticides chemicals that kind of stuff on the sheep um so it's very minimally processed sometimes i find hay in here <laughs> it smells very still smells pretty wooly even after i dyed it and rinsed it and all that stuff so it's a little toothier than what a merino would be um and there's linen in it as well so you could also hold the surrey with this together it'll soften the feel of the fabric a little bit but also it'll definitely again make it a little more subdued and you'll be able to get that um grayish undertone that's not really on the regular sock base because when I dye the sock base comes in as it, the undyed form is just pretty much white like very white cream um, but since this has a very um, beautiful gray undertone to it when it comes in holding this together ooh, that'd be so pretty like a shawl or something I want to say oh, that'd be so nice so yeah, so many options, so many things you can do. Ooh, and then, then like um, another fun combo would be would it go? like over the garden wall with urami. This would be such a nice, cozy autumnal sweater. And then let me do some tonal combos for you because uh, that's always fun. So like a uh, you wanted to do a colorwork sweater like this deep woods ski and kairu these are a fun trio or if you wanted to add another one in ame and you could even like just all of these are so easy to just interchange so interchangeable like just take this out this makes it fun take Kaido out. This is also super nice. Take Tsuki out. This is nice. Like, I tried really hard to make sure that the colorways in this collection are very interchangeable, like, easy to combine. Um, so that you can just choose what you like and know that when you get it, you'll definitely be able to make something beautiful out of it. So yeah, lots of lots of options. I could go on and on and on and on, but um, I'll be talking about it more on my Instagram. I'll definitely be putting up um, Instagram story question boxes so that you can just ask, you know, if you want to know what matches, uh, what kind of colorways I would recommend for certain patterns, for example. Um, I'll be putting that up there and you could always just email me or DM me on Instagram and I will be happy to help you figure out what you want to purchase. Um, okay, I think that's it for yarn related things. So if you are only here for yarn related things and you stuck with me for this long, I feel like this episode is like a bajillion hours long thank you so much for stopping by thank you for sticking around um i appreciate you being so patient and waiting for this new episode to come out i've been meaning to film this for the longest time but you know as you can see with me leaving like five million times during me filming this episode it's pretty hard to sit down and film in one go nowadays so yeah thank you so much for watching if you want to stick around for some life talk i figured i'll be putting that in here i don't usually do life talks usually like um i know emily for example from oh Gently Chaotic Knits is her new name. Gently Chaotic Knits, she does a little life update thing at the end. And I really appreciate that because, um, you know, you forget that 
I don't just knit <laughs> or that people don't just knit 24 7 you know that's all you see on social media but um I do I do I do do other things <laughs> although knitting is like maybe 80% of what I do if I'm not taking care of heavy but um so I thought I'd just uh do a little little life update um and talk about heavy and japan and all that stuff so if you're out of here and don't really want to hear about that kind of stuff totally get it totally understand i'll see you next time um i'll try not to cast anything else on but if you're leaving just let me know what have you been working on um any favorite projects or acquisitions or fun yarny things that you've been enjoying lately please let me know in the comments um again thank you for coming and if you're here for the life stuff so um evie was born our august 12th so four months ago ish yeah four months ago a little over four months ago which is crazy because it's already been four months <laughs> time has been flying yeah time has been flying pretty quickly since he's been here um we've adjusted well he was born perfectly healthy everything's good um here in japan i stayed in the hospital for five days you stay in the hospital for five days with your baby to adjust and let then the doctors you know check up on you and stuff like that um that's the norm so i stayed in the hospital for five days also here in japan they did not let tim in to see the birth or to see him during those five days at all so i was alone with evie for that whole time um unfortunately but i mean it was okay um hopefully next if we have a next baby he'll be able to be there for that so i can only facetime tim during those five days which is a little bit of a bummer um because you know he's our first child but because of the pandemic tim wasn't able to come in to the maternity ward um but once the five days was done it was good five the five days was tough by ourselves but um <laughs> okay i'll be right back okay i'm back sorry um he woke up from his nap good 30 minute nap so um what was i saying so yeah five days day tim couldn't be there it was fine came home evie's been great he is a very happy baby um very particular he likes things in a particular way but um other than that i mean that's fine right aren't we all so um We've been just hanging out mostly at home because it has been so hot here in Japan. Um, it's been in like the 90s, I guess, in Fahrenheit wise. Um, and it's been really humid and babies can't regulate their body temperature very well. So, um, so we've been trying to keep him at home where the AC is because we don't really, we don't drive because um, we use trains and we have to walk to the train station and it's been way too hot for a baby to even be out there for like 15-20 minutes so um, we've only been going out when it's been a little cooler um, so uh, not going out so much but um, again the reason why I'm having this shop update as a radio ship is because the uh we are going back to america towards the end of september staying for about a month um so we're gonna go visit our family we haven't been back in the u.s in two years um because of the pandemic uh japan has recently relaxed its um its regulations for Japanese citizens and people who hold visas so that's good 
so we were able to go out and see family. Um, so we're all very excited for that. It'll be Evie's first international flight and I'm really nervous about it. So if you have any international flight tips uh, with babies, he'll be five months old then. Um, so if you have any tips, please comment down below. Um, uh, yeah, but we're excited. It'll be fun. Um, what else? I've just been really busy dying all the yarn. Um, last ready to ship update I sold out in five minutes. So I have dyed much more than before. But yeah, hopefully it lasts longer this time than five minutes. I had a lot of angry emails. But um, so hopefully you all get what you want. Again, if you don't want to miss out, you can sign up for my email newsletter. I put all the links for all the listings in that newsletter, so you could just click and go. That is probably my tip. Um, that way you don't have to search. You could just click the link, check out, and you can check out with multiple orders. I always combine orders and shipping and refund shipping overages, so that's an option. But anyways, yeah, I um, recently got my uh, booster, so I was kind of out of commission for the weekend. Today is today's Tuesday, by the way, so I was out of commission Saturday, Sunday, and uh, so finally felt better on Monday, but I didn't want to work because I felt finally felt better, so I just wanted to have like a nice day off. Um, so we got pancakes. Uh, me, Tim, and Evie got pancakes. Evie did not eat the pancakes, but me and Tim did, and that was fun. Um, yeah, other than that, just been really busy with shop update stuff. Hopefully things calm down. Um, I probably, what the next podcast be, I'll probably try to film something before we leave for America so that because I probably won't be filming anything while we're in America we'll see about that though because I mean I'm probably going to be really busy I'll be shipping stuff out I'll be you know taking care of customer stuff be packing for the trip so this might be another long not long, but maybe like a month or two hiatus again, sorry. Um, but I just wanted to come on here and give you all a episode because it's been so long. So if you have been listening for the past, I don't know how many hours this episode is, thank you so much for sticking around and listening to me talk. Um, if you've been... If, you, if you're still here, then you're one of those who really like long knitting podcast episodes. So, me too. But um, thanks for sticking by. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. So, shop update. September 4th, 11 a.m. Japan Standard Time. Info's down below. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I missed, I've missed you all. I have been on Instagram though, but I know some of you are not on Instagram. And for those of you who are not on Instagram, I'm so sorry. I haven't spoken to you in a while. Thank you so much for sticking around. Um, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.